So I'm going to ask you, Jaime, how much do you really understand about AI? I think that the topic has been brewed a lot for the past, what, like five years? I, not much, to be honest. Mm. So it's probably really good that we have our guest on for today. Uh, you can see him right in the middle, right here on our three shot. We have Ziad, uh, Ziad Asgar. Thank you so much for joining us from all the way from Qualcomm. Now, some of the questions and some of the things that we talk about in this episode was made possible by the Snapdragon Insiders community. If you are not already a part of this community, you can head over to snapdragoninsiders.com and you can get exclusive access to the latest Snapdragon products and technology. So make sure you go and check that out. But Ziad, welcome. Feel Feel free to introduce yourselves to all of our listeners and viewers. Um, the floor is yours. Yeah, uh, you know, what I do for Qualcomm is essentially looking at all the different technologies that go into our products. And one of the key ones that we're really focusing on nowadays is artificial intelligence. You know, for us, when, when, we, were, when we started the whole discussion about having this, this interview and everything, I, I was like the first person to be like, okay, we definitely do need to do this. Mainly because I'm the first person that wants the most simplistic and basic answer for what is AI, or at least the, the state of AI like right now. <laughs> so essentially artificial intelligence is this umbrella term that we have coined that basically talks about machines that have intelligence as in being able to sense what's happening around them to be able to reason based on that and then to even take some actions. So anything that is able to do that, and as you can tell, we are not there yet. Honestly, a lot of this thing, these things get bundled under artificial intelligence, but really there are subsets of artificial intelligence. The first one being what we call machine learning. So think of machine learning as, you know, when you typically program something, you go ahead and say, and use certain if else statements to tell the machine what to do. Now you don't have to explicitly train the machine to do that, but you can actually give it data that it's able to learn based on that. And then the last level of that where we are today is what we call deep learning, where we use uh, neural networks to be able to do some processing that allows machine to take certain actions I feel like a lot of people with their daily lives using their smartphones or whatever the technology may be kind of takes all of this for granted. So I guess my question is what real world examples would you be able to give us um, on how AI is truly making a difference in our daily experiences with the smartphone or really anything else? That's a great question, but I'll take at least uh, you know one example. Think of it this way. In the past, the sensors on a smartphone or on a security camera, they really used to be dumb. What that means is they would capture whatever light is coming into them, but they never knew what that light stood for. With AI or with machine learning, we're giving those cameras, those microphones, the ability to be able to understand the data that they're capturing. But as you enable your devices to be able to understand the, the stimulus that they're getting, they can markedly improve the use cases that we have on them. Mm. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, this is like the perfect segue for the, the next question that I had because probably where I've heard it most is in photography. So I do know that the processing, the software portion of it, and even the hardware have a lot to do with what we get in the final result. And I, I would really like if you would, you know, if you could elaborate more on how AI takes control into all this process. How do you teach it to be better? Like how, how does that make a difference? Sure. So like one great example is, I mean, if you just look at the capability that the cameras have today in terms of being able to capture images in low light conditions. I mean, that's a very good example on how artificial intelligence has allowed people to take out a lot of the noise that might be there in that image. So what you do is that you train that camera by training it with long exposure, which means it's able to get a lot more light in versus what it's seeing with short exposure, you actually train that neural model to be able to take out a lot of the noise from the image, for example. Mm. But that's just one example. So there is like so many levels of improvement that we are seeing, uh, especially on imaging and video. Um, if I could switch gears just a little bit though, um, we are talking about the capturing of photo and video, but um, can I, ask you to dive a little bit into how AI is helping the consumption experience because um, as I've heard AI is actually helping when it comes to me viewing various forms of media content whether it's on YouTube whether it's streaming Netflix anything like that uh, from a consumption perspective another very important aspect that we see especially as we're working on some of our products that go into cloud inference engines uh, just imagine that somebody's uploading a video on you know a platform like Facebook so many different levels of it right another key capability that AI 
AI provides is it can actually improve the quality or resolution of a video. So for example, you might be in a location where you don't have that much of bandwidth on your device. Well, I can send and transmit that video to you at a lower quality, but within that device, I'm actually able to upscale that and still be able to show that at much higher resolution with much better quality. We call this super resolution. Mm. So there are so many different levels of uh, consumption experience also we're improving. I think that's a perfect way for us to get into uh, one of the cruxes of our discussion here, and that would be the Snapdragon 888 Plus. With this being your latest flagship processor um, and the sixth generation now of your AI engine being a part of this brand new flagship, can you tell us more about what this new addition or this new version or update is bringing to the table? Yeah, so Snapdragon 888, uh, or uh, like we c like to call it, the beast, uh, is really a okay. great product, honestly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of an inside joke, but honestly, the capabilities on this product from every perspective, whether it's artificial intelligence or graphics or or you know, uh, camera. You know, for example, on the camera, now we can actually capture 120 12 megapixel images in one second. So this is basically an increase of almost 30 percent. You know, in now wow. you couple that with with the AI piece, and with the AI we have you know enabled almost 26 trillion operations per second. We've come out with the 888 plus actually that actually pushes that up to 32 trillion operations per second. What we also done along with that is a completely new architecture where you have taken, you know, the way we did it is we have multiple accelerators inside our AI engine to be able to map it to a way a neural, uh, you know, engine looks like. So we have what we call scalar, vector, and, you know, tensor processors without that, within that uh, accelerator. And we've increased the performance of all of those. And at the same time, we can do three times more processing in certain scenarios for the same amount of given power. Yeah. And along with that, we've basically redone all the software stack to be able to leverage this amazing hardware that we put into this product. I guess the perception or the misconception that we have is that the more powerful the chip, the more power consuming. Uh, you're telling me that one of the benefits of the A88 Plus is the complete opposite then. So what we excel at at Qualcomm is exactly what you mentioned, to be able to do more processing at the lowest amount, at the lowest power consumption, because that is how you make that device last the whole day. And mm. that same advantage and those same techniques that we have learned over many years, we can actually apply them to those new areas and bring those benefits into those new end products. Uh, you know, we, we've been diving into power efficiencies and everything. And again, I, I think that it's just the, I think that the, the paradigm that we've had lately is that the more power, the more cooling you need. Tell me more about how, you know, how this AI actually like, how does AI know when to be more efficient? Because I'm even noticing, for example, that my, my phone senses when to charge. The way we are able to do this, I talked about the engine there. So we have a very big engine that's for very intensive use cases. But then we have a very small AI engine also that sits in the sensing hub to be able to do that always on like processing, right? So that's how we are able to cover both. So mm -hmm. if, if the AI and all of the data that it's already using in order to perform its functions is on device, obviously you have to provide it with said data. But as far as its ability to grow, to learn even more, we talked about machine learning and deep learning before, um, how much of it is required that you add more data to what the AI can perform with each new iteration, and how much is it able to actually learn on its own to evolve on its own? It's actually an area that we are really focused on, which is on device learning. Mm -hmm. So you would not do the full up training that you do typically because that is very, very intensive and usually happens in server farms. But what you can do is what we call, uh, one example is federated learning, for example. So I'll give you an example. When you use your keyboard, and especially if you're using Google Keyboard, it actually uses something called federated learning. So it's actually optimizing for the way you might use your keyboard or the words that you might use. So it's basically tweaking the model based on exactly what you do on your device. And then it might actually share a very, very synthesized version of that to the core model that sits somewhere in the server without exposing any of your private information. It actually enhances many of those capabilities. It customizes those experiences to you, the user. And I think that's where we're going in the future. The, this is the perfect segue because actually I wanted to talk about that feature. I mean, is 
Qualcomm working on next when it comes to this? Like you mentioned, for example, the fact that you're working on stuff that's going to happen five years from now. I mean, we don't mind any insider information <laughs> on this podcast. Feel free to say anything you want right here. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take the example of you playing a game in the future and you're playing that game using artificial uh, or rather augmented reality. Typically, you hold a device and you're able to press certain buttons to play the game. No more. You can actually point at a character in the game. You can talk to the character using using natural language processing because, well, that's a capability that we are doing. Uh -huh. Based on how you're playing the game, the game can actually change the plot of the game, make it different, make it more interesting. All of those are examples of what we have coming up. And I always like to talk about, uh, you know, there is a notion or a, a concept of AI for good. So there was this engagement that we did some time ago with, uh, with a company in India, where you can actually take your smartphone camera, put a small adapter on top of it with a lens, and it can actually look inside the, uh, the eye of a person and be able to detect, for example, things like uh, diabetic retinopathy, which is a condition Whoa. which deteriorates wow. the eye. Now, this might be an environment where people don't have those capabilities or they don't have access to uh, you know, healthcare very readily. Well, with something like this, you're able to help those people. That level of excitement that you're, that you're showing us here is something I wanted to actually ask more personally. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to see AI come through? What are you excited personally to really see it evolve into? What I personally really uh, am looking forward to is another angle or another dimension of application of AI. Mm -hmm. What we're focusing a lot on is applying AI to technologies that we have multiple technologies into inside our products. So the levels of application of AI are basically at use case level, but it's also at technology level, and now it's going even at the product level. We can apply AI to be able to make our 5G modem even better. Our leading 5G modems can now detect signal from even more complex conditions with the application of AI, for example. So now we have a special segment here uh, that it was an open prompt that Qualcomm put out for the community that we mentioned earlier. Um, Snapdragon Insider, shouts out to all of you who might be watching this or listening to this right now. So uh, one of the questions that was posed to the audience was the Snapdragon 888 Plus 5G mobile platform is the ultimate in AI performance and it's coming soon to a device near you. What burning questions do you have about AI and what it means for how you game, stream, listen, or watch? So we did get a few responses that we're going to go through right now. All right, so our first one here. As we know, AI basically learns on its own and keeps updating itself to get better. Is it possible that OTA updates can be provided that enhances the capability of AI? What I was trying to explain is that we can do that over the air sort of a change, but we can also do that on device as time goes by. And I think if we keep privacy and all into uh, in our minds, then probably as we start to do more of the on device learning, I think that probably would be uh, a better path. But of, of course, there could be scenarios where the data is not of uh, private nature and then absolutely it can be done uh, too. So you can envision that you can actually provide a new nu neural model to be able to do better noise uh, suppression, for example, in, in an imaging scenario. So absolutely something that's doable. Can I, can I add to that question just, uh, mm -hmm. has this been done already? It's already being done to, uh, to some extent, but mm. I, I think the, maybe the questioner wanted, yeah, th this, there will be a lot more of that happening, I feel. Uh, so yeah. our second question here um, is, one thing that we users aren't satisfied with is the battery, no matter how big it is. <laughs> uh, so it is, uh, so is it somehow possible that whatever we're doing, the AI would literally kill all of the background processes and concentrate on what we're currently doing to enhance those optimizations and the battery? That's actually a prime example of what AI can do from that uh, you know, uh, contextual picture that it has of the consumer, right? For example, you're driving, well, maybe your Wi-Fi should not be running anymore, right? There are things of that sort that can automatically be done depending on what the consumer is doing. And I think uh, we actually have uh, done some of that work and some of the improvements that we are actually doing on the device uses AI to be able to understand what parts of the engine should be running, what shouldn't be running, what should be turned off in the device. All of those are actually very good applications of AI that are being done already. And then our final one for, uh, for this is, um, there are some drawbacks of AI that we did see with Tay, which is the Microsoft AI that uh, I'm not going to go through what happened there. But <laughs> if someone bypasses the security and reverse engineers the process, making the, A the AI do similar things, can that be prevented? Can security be provided through AI if our data is being collected unknowingly and we get notified? Yeah, I think I kind of alluded to this uh, earlier, but the application of AI as it 
applies to newer and other technologies is absolutely an area that we are focused on. AI can actually look at what is happening on the device. Is there a lot of data that's being transferred? Is something on those lines happening? So that can absolutely be something that AI monitors. But I want to say that our products, the way we define them, security is front and center. And we make sure that our devices and the content on that is super secure. So yeah, we have a lot of technologies baked in to make things more secure, but AI can enhance that further, absolutely. Well, Ziad, we want to thank you once again for being a part of this episode, this podcast, this video with us. Thank you so much. We would love to have you again. Um, we whenever. would really appreciate to have you again. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Join the Snapdragon Insiders community at snapdragoninsiders.com.